if you've been working on watch movements for any length of time, you're probably aware of the importance of the regulator pin spacing as it relates to the rate of a watch. When it comes to adjusting and regulating the rate of the watch, the Etichrone system was a huge advancement in manufacturing because it made the spacing or the adjustment of the spacing so easy. But in vintage watches, being able to adjust the regulator pins is the key to bringing vertical rates closer to the horizontal rates. Knowing this, a lot of my students ask, well, what do you use to make these adjustments without breaking the pins or having the rate go from one extreme to the other? Well, today I'm going to show you how to make the tool I use and why it works so well. To make the tool, I like to use a piece of old mainspring that's about three millimeters wide with a strength or thickness of around two tenths of a millimeter. Then I just cut it off so it's about three centimeters in length. Before I shape it, I also like to temper the steel to make it as soft as possible, which will make it a lot easier to shape. The layout is pretty straightforward. This first line that I'm going to make is from the corner of the mainspring up about 10 millimeters or so and at about a 30 degree angle. Now these numbers don't need to be exact. You just want to be relatively close to these. Next, I'm just going to make a second line with the razor blade about one millimeter away. And these two lines are going to form the blade of the tool. Next, I'm going to make another line up about five to six millimeters from the tip of the mainspring blade. And this line is going to be at a 90 degree angle to the two lines that we just made. Probably one of the hardest things about making this is actually holding the mainspring while the tool is actually being shaped. For that, I just use a simple hand vise and I clamp it to the mainspring as close to the outside line of that blade as possible. Then using a number two file, I'm going to remove as much of this bulk material on the outside of the blade as possible. Now looking at it, you can see I still have a little bit of material to remove. So now I can just do that by hand on the file, getting as close to my mark as possible. To remove the inside material, I'm just going to use a square rat tail file. And I'm just going to try to remove as much of the material as possible from the other side of the blade. Once that's done, now I can clamp onto the blade to further reduce the blade width, and I'm going to use a small flat file. Next thing we need to do is taper the blade down from its overall thickness of 2.3 millimeters down to somewhere in the hundreds of a millimeter, okay? To do this, I'm going to use escapement buffs. Many of you may not have escapement buffs in your tools, but this can also be done by making up some sanding sticks with fine sandpaper. Just know that we're also going to polish this, so you want to get it as smooth as possible before we actually start the polishing step. With the bulk of the material moved, now I can switch to a cutting compound to remove the rest of the material for the final shape while smoothing it out before the final polishing. This compound is aggressive enough that I can also use it to further reduce the size of the blade down to exactly where I want it. Again, if you don't have a rotary tool, you could also use very fine sandpaper 
just know that it's just going to take a little bit longer. Now, if you're going to use sand vapor, you're probably going to need to get 1,000, 1,500, and 2,000 grits to get it polished. With all the shaping done, now I'm going to re-harden the steel. Now that my steel is hardened, now I can do my final polishing. And for that, I'm going to use Green Dialux Polishing Compound. Now, don't skip this step. You don't want to take any chances of the metal scratching the brass regulator pins as you're making this adjustment. All right, with our tool done, here's our final dimensions. The blade is approximately four millimeters long. It's nine-tenths of a millimeter wide at the top two-tenths of a millimeter at the tip. And it tapers in thickness from the top of the blade, which is 13 hundredths of a millimeter, to the tip, which is seven hundredths of a millimeter thick. And I like these dimensions because this will work in both small and large movements as well. Now, for the purpose of the video, I'm showing exaggerated adjustments to the pin spacing because in reality the adjustments that you would be making are extremely small. Ideally, this would be done with the movement in a holder while the watch is running and then inserting the tool between the regulator pins, making very small touches to the regulator pins. When the regulator pins are opened, this will slow down the rate in all positions, but the vertical positions are affected more than the horizontal positions because in the shorter arc of vibration, as the amplitude starts to fall, the hairspring spends less time in contact with the pins, causing the active length of the hairspring to start moving closer to the hairspring stud, which slows down the rate. If you would like to learn more about the finer points of watch adjusting and repair, visit me at watchrepairtutorials.com.